Hello, everybody. This is Sunil Tolsiani, founder of the Professional Investors Club right here in Canada. I have the honor and the privilege to have Mr. Blair Singer. And before I get into this guy, we're going to add huge value today because I know many of you have New Year's resolutions. And I hope one of the resolution is to grow your company, grow your business, and even grow your, your, your revenues. And the amazing story here is one day I'm driving around and I get a call from Robert Kiyosaki uh, just uh, two weeks ago or so. Uh, and he said, you know, I want you to come and uh, we're going to mastermind for 2024. I want to partner up with you. And at that time, I did not know that I was going to meet some amazing people. And this is where I actually sat right beside. We spent a whole day together, Blair and I. And um, and this is how businesses occur. And I know Blair adds huge value uh, to thousands and thousands of people all over the world. And that's why I want I wanted him on my YouTube channel. Blair, welcome to the show. Well, Sunil, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. And Happy New Year in advance. <laughs> yes, Happy New Year to you as well. And so, Blair, uh, tell us a little bit about you um, as, before we start, because we're going to get right into the value add. But just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'm uh, originally from Ohio in the heartland of America, Midwest, grew up on a dairy farm there. And uh, if I had to look at my life today back and compared to back then, it was like not even close but I watched my dad, we were a working dairy farm, work 24-7, 365 days a year, milking cows and doing chores. And I made a decision by the age of 10, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, that's <laughs> not for me. And uh, through one adventure after another, I ended up in Hawaii after I graduated from university. And my first business there was a little surf shop in Waikiki. And one day, this six foot three Japanese guy walks into my surf shop trying to get me to buy Velcro nylon wallets, right? <laughs> so you everybody knows who that was. That was Robert. And he was a sales rep for Xerox at the time. I was actually full-time a sales rep for the Unisys company at the same time. And that's when we met. It was way before Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And we started this journey or this adventure of business development, entrepreneurship, personal development, uh, studying it, working it teaching, ultimately teaching it. So the journey up until now has been one that we've done together for many years. Uh, but today I work with organizations all over the world. I work with Singapore Airlines, Morgan Stanley, IBM, um, lots of investment banks, building championship teams, increasing sales, all that stuff. And these days spend more of my time teaching entrepreneurs how to teach and how to teach them the things that school doesn't teach them. Uh, the things that need to be learned, you know, about grit, about ethics, about, you know, standing up when you get knocked down and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, and I do business still. We have licensees in over 30 countries around the world teaching our stuff. And now you're doing business with Sunil Tulsani, which is great. Yeah, how about that? How about that? But you said that we had met before. You, you, you knew a, a common friend of ours, Darren Weeks, right? Yeah, no, actually, uh, it was either Darren Weeks or T. Harvecker, one of the two, um, where I saw you. I'm talking about when I was a uh, police detective and I was transitioning from that to my world of uh, entrepreneurship, real estate investing, where I saw you on stage and uh, I was very impressed. And, you know, I'm very blessed in many, many years later to be able to do businesses with so many people sharing stages with people like Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone, Robert Kiyosaki, and some of the amazing people are now uh, interviewing you. Uh, and I believe uh, sometimes uh, a universe sends the right people at the right time. And and when we met at uh, Robert's, uh, you know, mastermind uh, with few people were there, came in first, you sat right beside me. I'm like, wow. And um, so you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are going to be doing New Year's resolution. And yes, uh, yes. and then, you know, we also know a lot of people do not fulfill those resolutions. But today, what I want to talk about uh, is is uh, from your skills and your point of view, which I know uh, is very important. Um, uh, what are, for example, I don't know if you want to share this with us for 2024. Do you have your own New Year's resolution, what you want to do for yourself or your family or for People, I suppose. 
Well, sure. Yeah. I, I just want to suggest I want to make for anybody that does New Year's resolutions before you do a New Year's resolution. My recommendation is make a list of all the things that you do not want to take into 2024. Ah, that's okay. Awesome. That's <laughs> Physically, awesome. mentally, emotionally, because one of the reasons people don't get what they want is because they're so filled with all these wants and then unfulfilled wants that it just becomes overwhelming. So the deal is clean the slate, you know, just say, I'm not taking this little voice that tells me I'm not good enough. I'm not taking my fear of, of, of objections with me. You know, if you're in sales, whatever it is, just make a list and, and, Write on a piece of paper, throw it in a bin and burn it, you know, and now set your resolutions. And for me, when I work with people at a, at a senior corporate level or entrepreneurs all over the world, it's kind of like, okay, let's look at three areas. Let's look at your family, personal life. Let's look at your business and also look at self-growth and set goals in all three of those areas. And then we kind of whittle them down. But I think that you, that what happens is, the imbalance and all that other stuff that comes from everybody complains, I'm not balanced and all that stuff. It's because we don't consider your whole life. Consider your whole life and, and put that together, set the goals in all those areas. Awesome. Uh, so your personal uh, uh, goal, one goal that you have for 2024. For my goals, <laughs> one of my goals is always the same. And that is we're going to take this business, my business to a new level. That's kind of a consistent deal um so when like when covid happened in 2020 we had to pivot big time because we were an event business uh and we did successfully and now this time the goal is to put ourselves on a path of 10xing our business again uh, nice. by, go, we're shifting from event business to a membership ecosystem i'm really excited about it to pull all hmm. these people together to uh, so they can converse with each other because here's what I found. One of the rules I teach in teaching is that the brilliance in any room, if you're teaching, is not on stage or in this side of the camera. It's the audience. They're the ones with the intellect. And so and so our the goal is to pull the, the brilliance out of them. So All we right. get creating an ecosystem where they have the opportunity to work together, talk together. I give them some stuff, but but that is in my experience, is the real magic. So that's a big goal to put that technically, because I'm not technical at all, to put that mm -hmm. ecosystem together. Uh, and we're hot on that path right now. That's a big business goal. The other one is to spend more time with my family. <laughs> um, because what I've learned is, as Dan Sullivan, great strategic coach, founder says, he goes, you got to find who's, not how's. Don't try to figure out how to do it, find the right who's to get it done. Then you can scale. Um, and so scaling is a big goal for this next year for us. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, I mean, we could be speaking for the whole day and maybe one day you'll be there on a big <laughs> stage with me. Uh, yeah. We host you or something like that. But today, well, let's just focus on um, business uh, because a lot of my community yep. is you know, they're one of the main goal would be at least one of the goals would be for them to increase their income in real estate, in business, entrepreneurship, uh, or side gig or whatever they do. What do you think is the number one skill? What number one skill if they have to learn? What would that be? I already know the answer, but go yeah, ahead. That's a that's a soft pitch. That's a, that's a nice soft pitch. Okay, yeah, because <laughs> I'm going to tell you that your number one skill in business, bar anything else, is your ability to sell. Is yeah. your ability to sell because sales equals income. You know, people think it's just it's just selling a product or a service. No, it's recruiting people onto your team. How do you find the right people? Why would a why would a, a superstar want to work for you? Uh, sales is raising capital. Sales yeah. is is putting putting individuals into your into your rental properties. I mean, it's it's everywhere. And but a lot of people say, well, I don't sell. I don't like, I'm not a sales type person. And when you make that statement to yourself, you immediately block your income. Yes, those are the, as Robert says, the the ENS usually, the, the left side. And then and we are talking about people who are either on BI or they want to get, uh, uh, or they want to get to BNI side, the business and the investor side. So, um, and also uh, I would say, uh, you're really actually a salesperson, even if you're not, salesperson right if you're a parent you're selling if you are a son you're selling if you want to put people in the room you're selling if you want to buy properties no money down you're really selling 
right? Would you say? Absol absolutely. I mean, you, you got it. I mean, sales is not just a business skill; it's a life skill. I mean, and, okay. think, ab think about your fan. Think about your wife. Think about your significant other. I mean, you know that was probably the most important sale of all. Sale. And yeah. the other reason, Sunil, why I say sales is your most important skill is because the most important skill is you selling you to yourself. Ah, okay. See, and and that's and what most people miss is that you know when you get as an entrepreneur as an investor you make mistakes things don't always go well you get knocked down but that ability to sell yourself on standing up go after it again learn what I need to learn and move on that's what takes most people out of the game. And good. So, I and, want to ask you this question now. Yeah. Uh, when I was growing up, I was not a good student. Didn't like school. Didn't like my parents didn't come to me and said, uh, you know, what we want you to do is grow up and become a salesperson because that would make us proud. <laughs> my father, my family, my extended family, my everybody said, you know, you're you, you, you know, you can choose anything you want in your life as long as it's doctor, engineer and a lawyer. Choose any of these three things. You're free to do whatever you want. <laughs> of course. Um, if uh, and I was I was introvert, um, shy. I would say, perhaps a certain part of my life, low, low self esteem. Sales was not on my radar. And now you just said something that is very uh, interesting, and I think we have all heard it. Which is the best thing to do first? You have to sell it to yourself. If I am that person, and there's thousands of people out there listening to this. How do they go from like, you know, from those kind of affirmations that their parents have taught them, you know, to, to just go these uh, become the E side. And now you're saying, you know, sell it to yourself is a, how, how do you transform? Okay. So the way you're going to transfer this is to, first of all, get over it. Okay. Number one, just get over it <laughs> because you are involved in a sales pitch almost your entire life. I have never met a child under the age of six that couldn't sell. Yes. Okay. And the truth yes. of it is, we also have an expression that goes, two people come together in a selling situation. The person with highest energy generally wins. And if you don't believe that, look at your kids. Yes. Okay. If their energy is higher than yours, you'll win. And so the key, the most important thing, Sunil, that a, that, that a person can do for another is help them get what they want. Help yes. them get what they want. That's what sales is. That's all it is. It's not a battle. It's not arm wrestling. It's not intimidation. It's not being about thick skin. It's about truly caring and helping other people get what they want. And when you can do that, then you're in, people are indebted to you. They love you. And if you do it honestly and ethically and all that stuff, that's important. But, but if you're out there going, well, I don't sell, just take a look at what you're doing. You're already doing it in, in some area of your life. Therefore, if it's already part of the landscape, just learn a little bit more about how to get better. Learn a little bit more about how to communicate, a little bit more about how to handle objections, how to help people find what people want and give it to them. Exactly. In our community, uh, we keep uh, driving in saying selling is serving. Selling is serving. And if we come across that more I sell, more I serve, uh, more impact I make, I think selling doesn't become a bad word, right? It, you know, sell is four letter word. Uh, I don't know why these balloons are coming up from where, but I'm glad they are coming. Uh, I like okay. it. I like it. Okay. So, 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 okay. So get over it. Um, <laughs> so if somebody is introvert, shy, uh, they are not in a traditional uh, sale, selling uh, profession, for example, maybe they are entrepreneurs, a side gig, maybe they work right now, but they want to get into business in 2024 and beyond, right? What's give us some ideas? What should they be doing, especially if they they don't consider themselves as a salesperson? Okay, first thing they should do is they should talk to more people. Okay, you know, start start talking to people and don't try to sell anything. Just get in, become interested in other people. Talk to them. What do you do? Why do you do that? Tell me more about that. Spend time asking questions. Which, by the way is the most powerful tool if you're going to sell is the power of asking questions because the person that you should probably spend because sales is pretty simple if you just ask people what they want listen ask them a lot of reasons why they want it and then go find a solution give it to them they'll typically buy it if you were listening to them okay so the the thing is meet other people um, talk to more people, get interested in other people. That's the basics of, of, of the thing. 
socialize a little bit, join some organizations. Um, and when you go, don't be, don't just sit in the back corner, not talking to people, talk to people. Again, take the pressure off of selling, just get used to talking to people. Now, if you wanted to get good at selling, there's other steps beyond that. But I, the, just from the very beginning, become a little bit more social. Because if you want to help people, you got to talk to them, either through media or verbally. Right, right. Um, so can you give us, you talked about power of questions in sales. Can, can you uh, give us a few questions that if they met somebody at an event, for example, uh, for example, um, what kind of questions they that would that you would ask and doesn't feel like salesy per se? Yeah, that, well, that's a good question. So I would, if I were in a, an event, I didn't know anybody there, and I went up to somebody, and I think the first question I would ask, and by the way, st this has been proven statistically that the most non-invasive question that you can ask that doesn't put you in the sales category is, "Where are you from?" Oh, where are you from? Now, for some reason, you know, studies I read, I don't know who went through this kind of research, but anyway, where are you from? And where is that? And 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 because people are usually pretty proud of where they're from and they'll talk about that. And then you can ask, you know, so what do you do for a living? Or uh and so why did you how did you get into that? What why what what got you involved in that? How's it going? Are you still happy with that decision, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the key here is there's two words. One is called interesting, and the other one is interested. The right. key is, is to get interested. Don't try to be interesting. That's ah. a big mistake that even professional salespeople make. Okay. So get truly interested. I love talking to people. Why do you do that? People are doing the most amazing things, amazing businesses, amazing ways of doing it, and just get into it and, and, and be the person, be kind of like the investigative. Uh, the investigator in the police department, right? And, and, and you know, talk, so why did you do that? And how come you do that? And tell me more about that and get interested in it. So those are those are some basic, simple, simple questions you can ask to get in, get used to talking to people and get used to being interested in people. Okay, so let's say uh, we ask these questions. And I, by the way, I realized when I met you uh, at uh, with Robert there, Robert Kiyosaki, you asked me, where are you from? You know, how'd you get in there? So I, I recognize, which is very really nice. Okay, so let's say uh, we are not who we are. Like, not like let's say we're, I'm not this person that knows a lot of people, but I'm just a regular person going in the, into... Uh, let's say a real estate club, which is what I own, right? Real estate club. People go in and there are two types of people in the real estate club. One is a person who can find good properties. Generally speaking, I'm saying uh, find good properties. The other one has the money, but doesn't want to do the work. They want to be passive investors. And, and, and the, the, you know, the person with uh, good properties is looking for this person and this person is looking for a trustworthy person, but they don't really, you know, so let's say you, you and I, um, you were at the uh, club or something, real estate club or any, any entrepreneurship club. Let's say, um, you know, you asked and you were interested in that other person. You asked all these question, questions. What, uh, how do you close and if you close uh, at that event? Meaning, for example, if I'm um, a person that has properties and I'm looking for an investor, let's get that scenario out. And, 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 and you know, they just met. How do you close um, or, or do you close or say, what would you say to that person who is a potential investor, for example? Well, I think for if, if you're in a group group of investors, you know, I think that what you want to do is, is as you're talking and, and building some rapport with people is ask them, you know, when you're looking for an investment, what, what kind of investment are you looking for? You know, Perfect. what's the you know, what's your criteria? Is there an ROI? And I wouldn't ask all these questions at once, but as we're going to the discussion, so tell me about it. You know, particularly if you're brand new, it's really easy because if you go and you're brand new, I, look, I'm I'm a novice here. I'm trying to learn something. Yes. So, you know, so if I was a new investor, you know, and you're and you were going to give me advice, which I kind of am, what would you tell me? How would I start? What would be the criteria? Tell me your criteria. How, how do you do that? Okay? Yes. And maybe you're not going to close it right there. Maybe what you're going to do is you're going to, you, you have to ask yourself, do what I have to offer is my investment fulfill that criteria? 
Okay. Right. You know, and then you would ask a question and say, look, if I, if, if I could show you something that over delivers on what you're looking for, would you be interested in looking at it? Yeah. And that alone is just a closing. It's not like a real closing, but it's still a step one of the closing, I suppose. And, and, and if the person, and if you built your rapport up to then for a couple of minutes or for a half a day or whatever, and you've done your homework and you say, look, if I could show you something that looks very similar or even better than what you're talking about, would you be interested in hearing about it? Now, right. they're either going to say one of two things, actually one of three things. They're going to say yes, no, or tell me about it right now. They'll just say, yeah, well, do, what, what do you have in mind? Okay, yes. now we're into the presentation, right? We're into the presentation. And, and again, the other problem is people talk too much. Remember this. Selling is not telling. Selling is not telling. People tell, 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 tell. You ask. So yeah, so I'm working, I have this project, so many units in such and such a place. And and the, the key to this unit, the big selling point to this is that the units right now are being rented at, you know, easily 25 to 30% under market right now. So there's a huge upside on that. Stop. Is that something you'd be interested in? Ah. It's, that's called a trial close. Okay. So is that something you'd be interested? In? Well, it depends. Well, thank you. So it depends on what? Now you're going to get more information, which is, which is going to now determine the next thing, next thing you will ask them. Okay. Right. See what I'm saying? So it's, awesome. so it's a dance. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have uh a sales system. I, I know you've been working with Robert Kiyosaki and other uh, amazing people. Uh, take us through some sort of a sales training, like a mini five minute, two minute training. I know you have, you know, if people are interested. They would, they should buy your books and, and, and look into what you, what your courses are, but tell us if somebody wants to um, either improve where they are, they are. Maybe they are in sales. Maybe they are thinking of raising money for their real estate. Maybe they are thinking of raising money for their uh, for their entrepreneurship. Uh, maybe they they are going to pitch to a shark, for example. Uh, what advice? What steps would you say in sales that you can give us that give, give it to us in short period of time? Okay. Well, I'm not sure if this is what you're looking for, but I'm going to tell you that the biggest mistake most entrepreneurs make is they just try to go out and sell and close. That's a big mistake. Okay. okay. The first thing is to understand that every business, every industry has its own selling cycle, certain steps. So, for example, when Robert and I, he was working for Xerox, we had the same selling cycles, a five-call close. Cold call, purpose to make an appointment. Second call was an appointment. Third call was a proposal. Fourth call was a demo of the equipment. And five call, you close. So understanding the steps, it's kind of like playing golf, Sunil, is that if you want to master the game of golf, you just don't do drive balls off a tee. I got a twenty. I got a twenty-one year old that can drive the ball three, four hundred, almost not four hundred, but he can drive it over three hundred yards. Right? I mean, he's killer. But when he gets anywhere close to the green, he's a mess. Yeah. So his game sucks. Right. So the deal is, you got to master the pieces. The standard pieces to a sale are first find person with money that has a need. Don't waste your time on other people. That's number one. Number two is build some rapport and do some discovery, which is what we were just talking about. Find out what's going on for them. Find out their languaging, all that stuff. Then three, what you, you ask a person enough questions and you'll, here's what happens. Tell me more. Tell me more. They go at some point they go, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. That's what they'll yes. say. Okay. Because it's called reciprocity. People love to talk about themselves. They'll go, well, tell me about you. Ah, now you get the chance to present. And I suggest you have something very brief. Look, well, I, you know, in my case, you know, for the last 20 years, I've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs in over 30 countries, helping them build championship teams, increase their sales, stuff like that. Is that something you might be interested in? Yes or no? Okay, you see what I'm saying? And then at that point, well, yeah, tell me more. Now you can pitch, pitch a little bit more and, and then trial close. Is that something you'd be interested in? Well, uh, so then the next step is turning a no into a yes, which is how to handle an objection, which I'll tell you at this point in time, that is the number one reason that people don't like to sell or don't admit that they sell because objection. nobody likes re to be re embarrassed and nobody likes rejection. So okay. that's, that's a personal development journey. And that's how 
<laughs> the reason Robert is so insanely good at selling and promoting and marketing is because we all, he like myself, we all went through that drilling of handling objections, handling objections, taking a lot of no's so we could just burn it out of your system. Now, in a program, I put you through a drill where I just hammer you with some objections and typically show you exactly how to do it. And, and it's very simple. You just acknowledge it. They, somebody says, you're too expensive. Thank you. Why do you think it's too expensive? Blah, 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 blah. Well, because I can get it cheaper from the other person. Thank you. What is it you're looking for? Question, 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 question. Till after a while, you don't care about them saying, you're an idiot. Thank you. Why would you say something like that? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so so it becomes it, you burn that little voice issue out of your brain. That's the personal development side, right? That we all have. And you know, you turn and I say, okay, so if I could show you something within your budget that fulfills the need, would you be interested in looking at that? I go, yeah, good. So I took the no, turn it to a yes, okay, and then you le learn the steps of closing. And depending on what you're doing, you could. It could be five steps or eight steps, depending if you're on a stage, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, if you're, you know, whatever you're doing, it varies a little bit. Okay. Good. Let's, let's do this. Let's uh, talk about some objections. Uh, okay. uh, give me a uh, few objections. So let's just tell me one objection that you hear all the time. Okay. Most common for any entrepreneur, too expensive. Too expensive. I don't have the money. Okay, or, or I don't have time. I don't have time. Or just not interested. Okay. Just not interested. Okay. All right. So uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so, so if I, if you were talking to me and we were playing this role play and I say, you, you know, you're, let's say you're selling your stuff. Right. And, and I say, well, uh, Blair, I, I just don't have time for this. Go ahead. Let's play. Okay, good. So thank you. So you don't have time. What is it you don't have time for? I don't have time to go through your program. Uh, okay. Okay. So do you, are you interested in building your business? Yes, for sure. Okay, so what would be some of the ways that you plan on doing that? Um, I'm not really sure. That's why I came to you. Okay, good. So <laughs> if I could show you something that didn't eat up your time, but allowed you to get some get a good return on your investment, would you be willing to look at that? Yes, great. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Give us one more objection. Uh, I get this objection a lot of times. I have to talk to my wife or, or or spouse or something like that. Do you ever get that? Yeah. Let me try it with you. You you should know now. Okay. So I need to talk to my wife about this. What would you say? <laughs> I would say, oh, great. Uh, I would do the same thing. So what is it that you want to talk to her about? There you go. See? Simple. Yeah. Simple. It's logical. The problem is, is for most people, when you're actually in a selling environment, your emotion goes up a little bit. And yes. what we know is when your emotion goes up, your intelligence goes down and your brain kind of disengages from your tongue. So that's why you got to practice it. But see right here in a non-threatening environment, you know exactly what to do. You gave a really nice acknowledgement. I would do the same thing too. Okay. What do you want to talk to her about? Well, blah, blah, blah. now you're back in the conversation again. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I agree with you that uh, you know the, the money. Uh, talk to somebody else or, or a partner or something like that. Or I'll do it. Uh, I can't make a decision right now. That's another one I get right. And okay, I'm interested, but not today. You know, uh, not today because of whatever reasons they have. The sun is the wrong way. Whatever it is. Um, if uh, if you had to. Uh, say something about sales, uh, uh, some some uh, lesson or steps that you want to share that you think would be very valuable for anyone on the planet. Uh, go ahead. You're an expert in this area. Uh, something that you wanted to share with us. Go ahead. Well, I, I mentioned it briefly. Excuse me. Is that the most important sale of all is you selling you to yourself and the recognition of doing that will pervade every corner of your life okay because we're all faced with obstacles life is learned by trial and error and when the trial happens the question then becomes are you going to learn something or are you going to blow it off deny it pretend it didn't happen or be depressed okay so so the thing is, is to understand right now i got to sell me to me and 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 to have strategies techniques there's tons of it. There's thousands of them. There's affirmations. There's, you know, there are role plays. There's all kinds of things that you can do. But most people 
don't do that. Most people don't do that. And, and, so, and what happens these days, unfortunately, is because everything, a lot of things are driven by social media. People think that they can just put stuff out on social media and people come, come and buy. So they come to a webinar, right? And now they're in front of a, of a live group of people and they don't understand why they're not closing anybody. Because now it's, now they really need to be able to sell and they can't let the, the their marketing copy do all the selling for them, okay? So I think that the most important thing, Sunil, is that that we, uh, we're engaged in a sales pitch to ourselves every day. And I think the other thing to say is that our kids grow up in a world where they're where they're not taught any of this. They're not taught about selling. They're not taught about how to work in teams. As a matter of fact, they're, they're not taught about the value of mistakes. I mean, those three things alone are are, are typically, I'm, I'm going to stop here in a second because I'll be here all day, is that is that <laughs> those three things, though it's not what the school teaches, it's the way it's taught that enforces mistakes are fit. You're a failure. If you make mistakes that selling is, is not professional. It's not a good thing to do. Okay. That, and do it on your own, do everything on your own. And, and, and I don't see, there's not a problem in the world right now that I see that could not be solved by people that know how to get their egos out of the way, how to cooperate, how to be willing to make mistakes and learn them. Um, and I think the failure of, the way, not the education system, just education in general, ha, is is one of the reasons we're fraught with so many problems. Okay, um, and again, it's basic awareness of things, basic mindfulness of some things that sometimes you have to scratch your head and go, "I thought these people were smart people." You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think that that's the bigger thing. And if I'm just going to interject a 30 second pitch here. And I'm going to say this is I'm going to say that everybody out there, if you're a successful investor or an entrepreneur, then I'm going to tell you, give you a quote that was given to me by a colleague of mine. His name was Po Chung. Po was the founder of DHL International. He you know, started in Hong Kong, sold it to Deutsche Post with over 200,000 employees. We worked together several years on a couple of education projects. He said this, if you've had any level of success, it's your societal responsibility to teach it to others. Nice. Societal, societal, right? So again, that's an, that's pretty that's pretty important. And so I tell entrepreneurs, you want to grow your business, you want to grow your business at no cost. Do you want to be seen as a thought leader in your industry and and just expand your business? I'll tell you what, learn to teach, teach people, then sell to them. Mm. This was Robert and I took this approach many years ago. Teach, then sell. Teach. Give something first. You said serving people. Yes. Teach them something. Teach them some value. Give them value, and and bring them together to to do that. And 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 then once they get to know you, and you can teach them about your products, of course. But you can teach them about your way of doing business, your philosophies around business, about importance of teams and leadership. And then what happens, people, you build this huge groundswell of following. Now you yes. have a movement. Now you got now you got a community and you got a lot of people that will be happy to buy your products. Awesome. Awesome. Um, as we finish off, uh, recommend a few books on sales uh, or, or anything like that. I, obviously, you may include one of yours if you wish. <laughs> okay. Of course. Uh, sales. Yeah, here's one. This was the first book. It's a rich sales dad dogs. advisor book, yes. Sales Dogs, that you don't have to be an attack dog to be successful in sales. If you're going to pick a book to read on sales, pick an older one. Oh, I see. And the reason I say pick an older one, some of these books are written in the night, you know, like Napoleon Hill and Ogmandino. And these guys, I mean, these are, they're legends. And yes, they don't give you the, the cool little tactics, but they're going to give you a mindset of what this is all about. Uh, yes. ir irrefutable law, you know, even marketing, the irrefutable laws of marketing by Trout and um Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So these books I have on, on my bookshelves and I go back to them over and over and over again to read them uh because they're sound principles, principles of life, principles of controlling your mind, being able to be disciplined enough to uh, make corrections and to keep going in the heat of the battle.
Awesome. And uh, if I can add, uh, what has helped me is books from Zig Ziglar has helped me a lot. And my good friend, Brian Tracy, he's got some great uh, oh, yeah, books yeah. From all the way back. He's uh, yeah. you know, So thank you. Uh, anything else you want to take before we finish off this interview, Blair? No, but thank. I just, yeah, I just want to say this. Thank you for doing what you're doing. You're thank welcome. you for putting this group of people together. Um, great things come from great groups. Thank you. Uh, throughout throughout all humanity, when people good good people of light mind get together and brainstorm and learn from each other and learn together, great things happen. Great things happen for them, and great things happen in the world. So it's an honor. So thank and, and it's not an easy. I know your position. It's not an easy thing to do. Okay, but you've done a great job. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you, Blair, and uh, more. Uh, amazing things to come in 2024 and beyond. God bless you. Take care, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.